welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make arroz con mandules and honey barbecue chicken in the oven. This is my take on one of my favorite recipes ever and today I'm going to show you how. So stick around. Okay, so here I have my bucket of chicken. I am going to season it, and the first thing I'm going to do is grab a spoon and put a couple spoon spoonfuls of sofrito. This is, whoops, where's the lens? Right here. This is sofrito, okay? Now, my sofrito usually looks a little bit more reddish, but due to coronavirus, I don't have everything I need. Let me turn this camera a little bit more so you guys can see. There we go. Okay, so there's that. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put adobo. Now, I usually use the blue cap, but this is the red cap. Um, because when I went to buy the blue cap one, it was already out. So you want to add this generously. This is usually how I do it. I eyeball it. Okay. Then I'm going to add two packets of sazon, which you see here. Again, I'm going to add this generously. already washed my hands for mixing then I'm gonna add garlic I just bought this garlic so it's still sealed I'm gonna open it real quick here all right so we're gonna add garlic also apply generously I like a lot of garlic flavor in my chicken when I'm doing barbecue then I'm gonna add some basil leaves. And I'm gonna add some dry oregano. As it just, whoops, it just gives it an amazing flavor. To add a little bit of extra garlicky flavor, I'm gonna add roasted garlic herbs seasoning. Just because I love the chunkiness of this seasoning and it gives it such a nice flavor when it cooks. And last but not least, I'm going to add some white vinegar. This gives it such a nice flavor and tanginess, and it creates such a delicious marinade. So since I already washed my hands, you're just gonna grab your hands and you're gonna mix everything. So this is what it looks like after you've mixed it all together. Okay, since this is a big bowl of chicken, I am only gonna use half of this bowl and the other half I'm going to transfer into Ziploc. I'm gonna put half of the chicken in this Ziploc freezer bag so that it can stay marinated and it can stay fresh. That way, when I'm ready to cook chicken again, it's already seasoned and all I have to do is throw it in the oven or throw it on the stove top. Okay, I've separated my chicken into Ziploc baggies they're going into the freezer now. And in the meantime, I'm going to prepare the chicken in the glass pan where it will be cooked in the oven. All right, now that I have this in my glass pan, there you go. I'm going to cover this with aluminum foil and I'm going to pop it in the oven for 350 degrees and that's gonna cook in the oven for an hour. Okay, now that the chicken is in the oven and it's ready to go, I'm gonna let that sit in the oven. It's going to cook by itself within, I would say, 30 minutes 
20 to 30 minutes, I will come into the oven, I will flip the chicken, and I will continue to do that for every 30 minutes. Um, I like to leave it in there for an hour. Sometimes it might take longer. Um, and if that happens, that's okay. Um, we will check back on the chicken. The rice with gandules is the quickest thing. And because it's only Carlos and I, I don't use a lot of rice or beans. Now, because I am um, making enough food for leftovers for tomorrow, so that I don't have to cook tomorrow and we can just eat, reheat the food and eat it, um, I will show you how much um, rice and beans I do for that so that we can have enough for leftovers. Okay, now that the chicken is in the oven, it's cooking, it smells good, I'll show you guys that in a minute. I'm gonna show you how to make arroz con gandules. Now mind you, every Puerto Rican woman out there makes this rice completely different. So my ingredients will not be the same as probably your mother's or your grandmother. Now mind you, there's a lot of ingredients that I am missing today because of COVID-19. So whenever I went out to do grocery shopping, there's a lot of things that I could not find that I do use to cook. So um, I'm going to make this rice with whatever I got. And I pray to God that it smells exactly and tastes exactly the way I make my original rice. <laughs> but this is a quick and easy recipe that you can follow and do at home. I hope you like it. Okay. So I'm gonna leave the fire on high. Okay. Now the first thing that I'm gonna put in my pan to make this rice is olive oil. I'm sorry, not olive oil, avocado oil. Now I'll explain all of this once I'm done. So you wanna put a little bit like that. And the next step is add your sofrito. So I like to do a tablespoon. So about a tablespoon of sofrito. And I'm, just for today, I'm gonna add a little bit more. A little bit more. And you're gonna saute it. I'm just going to let that saute for a little bit. Mm, smells so good. If you hear that sizzle, that means you're doing it right, okay? So next, I'm going to use one packet of sazon. You're going to go ahead and throw it in there. The key to this is you're going to saute everything. Then you're going to add your adobo. You can apply that generously. Not too much, you don't want the rice to be salty. And before I add the beans, I'm gonna saute everything. So, mix everything up together. Then I'm gonna add tomato sauce, one can of tomato. Add the whole thing in there. And you want to mix. Okay. Next, you're going to add your gandules, which are pigeon peas. Now, this is a big can, so I'm only going to use half. So, about that much. And then there's the rest there. I'm gonna freeze this for the next time that I need to make rice. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this. And you see how it's already getting into that pretty red? That's how you want it to look, okay? many Puerto Ricans and Latina moms that use regular white rice to make this dish but today I'm using jasmine rice I like jasmine rice because it's aromatic it gives it a great flavor it's long grain and you can use a lot less rice and it grows into a big pot and I'll show you what I'm talking about right now 
Okay, so this is boiling or bubbling. That's a good thing. I'm gonna add my rice. And I'm not gonna add the whole thing, I'm just gonna add about that much. That much rice. The good thing with jasmine rice is that it grows when you add water. So after adding the rice, you want to mix it. You want to make sure that the rice is completely covered in this tomato sauce with the pigeon peas. So that means leave no grain of rice white and uncovered. So make sure that your whole rice looks red. cilantro to my sauce but I got caught up cooking so I'm gonna add it now before I add in some water so I'm gonna add cilantro cilantro gives it a nice flavor so I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure that everything is covered in there and I'm gonna add some water to this there's a little bit in there so I'm gonna add some water and pour it in about that much oh that much of water just throw it in there the cilantro is going to cook in the rice and it's going to give it a really nice flavor and a really nice aroma more water to this so I'm just gonna add water to like cover the rice mix everything up really well you want to make sure that the rice is covered with water I'm gonna add a little bit more water and then let it cook so I'm gonna add extra water because the water is key, it's gonna help this rice grow and it's gonna help the, the rice cook. All right, so that's about as much water as I want. I did not finally chop the cilantro, so as you can see, it looks, it looks long, but that's okay because the cilantro is going to cook down. I'm adding some adobo on top and I am mixing this up. Oh, I also forgot to add this. So I'm gonna add a cilantro cube. Here, let me zoom out of here for a minute. I'm gonna add a cilantro cube, one of these in there, while it cooks. So what I'm gonna do is just add it, kind of break it down to add that extra cilantro flavor on top. You want to add that while you're sauteing everything before you add in the water, that way the, I mean, before you add in the rice, that way the beans and all the seasonings just have all of that sauteed together, sauteed together, but um, since I forgot that step, I'm doing it last. So now we're going to let it sit and cook. Okay, so an important note, while making this rice, there's a lot of moms out there and grandmas that use um, olives to put in the rice and they'll saute it with the beans before adding the rice. Carlos and I do not like olives in our rice, but when I am doing arroz con gandules, for a large party, I will add them. Also, a typical thing that Puerto Ricans like to add is the roasted, or not the roasted, the sweet red peppers that come in a can. They like to add that on top after the rice is turned and cooked on low. 
Um, right now it is boiling. I don't have that. I'm not doing anything fancy. It's just for Carlos and I to have food to eat tonight and tomorrow. So I'm not adding any of that stuff. Like I said, we don't like olive oil, olives in our rice. There's um, there's other stuff that people like to add to it, but this is the simplest and the best way and my favorite way to cook it. Um, in a different video, I can show you different techniques on how to make this rice, but this is my favorite way of making it in the house. And like I said, there's a lot of things that I don't have that I usually put in the rice due to COVID-19. So I hope you like this recipe. I'm gonna check back with you in a few minutes. So when the rice is boiling like this, I like to start mixing it and I'll show you guys a little of how I do that. There we go. All right, so I'll start mixing it and lowering it a little bit. The key about this rice is that you wanna mix it um, little by little so that one, it doesn't get too stuck on the pan and two, so that it doesn't like burn because it, if it burns, if you let it dry up, and then mix it, it can burn and it's just not gonna taste very good. So I don't mind the stems, some of the part of the stem of the cilantro because that will cook down and it will wilt in there once I lower this heat. can see I have mixed it and there's still some moisture in there so I'm gonna wait a little bit so that I can mix it again and then add the lid now I'm gonna lower the heat to about between four and six like a medium low mix one final time the point of mixing the rice is that you want to make sure that every grain of rice is cooking properly and there is no moisture in there because then it's not going to have that really soft consistency and texture that you want. So there, the rice is not properly cooked and that's how you want it to look. And then you're going to add the lid and just leave it on low heat for about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, I've let the chicken cook for a while, so it's now time to cook it. So we gotta pull it out the oven. And I like to grab a fork. Let the steam out, because you do not want to get burned. Ooh. That just looks so delicious. Now I'm gonna flip everything. And let it cook. After I flip everything, I'm gonna let it cook on the other side. So after flipping the chicken, I'm going to mix the rice or turn the rice. to do this at least once after putting the rice on and cooking it. Because you want to make sure that it cooks all the way through. And it's not fully cooked yet, so I'm going to cover it. I'm going to higher the heat a little bit and turn it up to a medium low and I'm just gonna let it sit and cook while the chicken is almost done. Okay, the rice is ready. Let me show you. That is what it looks like. Yummy. And I've added, okay, if I can close this up. I added natural unfiltered honey to the chicken and I've added honey barbecue sauce. This one is Sweet Baby Rage. That is what that looks like. 
I'm gonna let it sit there for five minutes let the juices kind of work together and create a nice creamy barbecue -y sauce for the rice and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like on a plate all right the chicken is officially done and out of the oven that is what that looks like it's sizzling the sauce the barbecue sauce has gotten thicker it's mixed it has um, honey in there so now I am going to serve it on a plate and show you what that looks like so this is the finished product I added some broccoli because you need your veggies this is Carlos's plate by the way so you have your rice I put, added the sauce on top of the rice that is broccoli cooked with a little bit of butter and salt in the microwave for two minutes and then the finished product okay. all right that's it for this vlog i hope you like this recipe if you try it comment down below let me know what you what you think what you how you like it if it tastes good um this is one of my favorite recipes carlos and i love making um barbecue chicken on the regular here uh, whenever we can i should say not on the regular but whenever we can and so uh, this is one of our favorite things to do if you like this video give it a like share it with your friends comment down below and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell button so you can be notified for our next video so don't forget to comment below um, in our most recent video so that you can get a shout out on our next uh, or on my next video on the next vlog um, thank you guys so much for watching thank you guys for tuning in I will see you guys next time <coughs> bye